Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem video. This is a postmortem of my uh, Blitz Chess game number 172. I was white here, kicked off with e4, and my opponent played c5, the Sicilian defense. So we continue with knight f3. Here, let's put in the opening book. And my opponent plays knight c6, second most popular choice in the Sicilian after d6. Um, and uh, this leads to some interesting lines. I, I continue, you don't have to play the, the open Sicilian at this point. You can try other moves, but uh, I continue with the open Sicilian. Let's see, bishop b5 and uh, knight c3 are your principal alternatives. But uh, c here, pawn here, c takes, knight takes, pretty much standard stuff. And then now knight f6 is the main move here. I was expecting um, e5, new variation. This, um, but this is not the Sveshnikov. I was a little bit confused during the live commentary. This is actually the Kalishnikov which after knight b5, um, d6, if I play knight 1 to c3 here, um, this transposes back into a Sveshnikov. Uh, but you don't have to play that way. You could play c4, for example. So um, the idea with the uh, Sveshnikov move order is you play knight f6 first, and then I responded knight c3, and then, um, then black plays e5. So uh, so this uh, option of playing c5 doesn't arise here in this situation. So after knight uh, to b5, there, there's a bit of a threat of knight coming to uh, knight coming to d6. So the normal move is pawn to d6. I guess uh, it's possible to ignore that threat. For example, h6, I guess, is a move. But here, knight d6 check, bishop takes, queen takes. Uh, seems like things are a bit awkward for black. Um, gives white, the computer likes white here quite a bit. So even after queen e7, queen takes, king takes, um, still says white has a pretty good advantage. It's not, <laughs> honestly, this is not all that impressive to me. I mean, uh, a lot of force is gone. You know, you've taken away black's uh, castling privilege and he has a weak pawn here, but uh, I don't know. Seems seems like a, it's still a defensible position. But uh, anyway, black generally avoids that. I mean, I don't mind... Uh, I wouldn't want to play that way either. <laughs> so uh, d6 is the main move here. And uh, and then bishop g5 is one of the, the top tries. Although you can also try, interestingly, you can also try knight d5. Um, and the idea here is he, there's no time to grab the pawn on e4, which is undefended, um, because there's a threat of knight c7. So you have to take the knight. <clears throat> and then this knight doesn't have too many good squares. Looks like knight b8 is the main move, but nice. also knight e7. Seems a little more logical to me, <laughs> and it's preferred by the engine. Anyway, it's a game. You can play this way. Uh, some slight opening edge to white, but not maybe the best way to play. So the most challenging way is to continue to develop your pieces and pin the knight. And the reason you need to pin this knight is because there's a indirect threat here of the pawn coming to a6 and then to b5 and then uh, threatening to come to b4 and kicking this knight away and then this pawn is loose on e4. And this all happens with tempo because after a6 the knight goes to a3, it's pretty much the only move. b5, you're now threatening b4 with a fork of these two knights. You have to do something about that right away and you no longer have time to uh, save this uh, pawn. So you have to uh, do the pin right at this move uh, before this uh, pawn stuff starts happening. So black plays this anyway, knight a3, b5. And now, uh, because of the pin, you have time to play a move like um, knight d5. Or you could just take the knight, which is also a decent way to play. So bishop e7 is played here. And now, um, now I play the wrong move, actually. Um, the main move here is bishop takes f6. Um, I was half right in the commentary. This is not a great piece, and so you don't necessarily want to trade your knight for it. Um, but the thing is, you don't really want to trade this knight at all. This knight on um, on d5 is a great piece, and you want to hold on to it and take with the bishop here. So that's the way to remember it. This is a good piece. This is not a good piece, so so you don't want to trade for the bishop. You want to keep the knight here and uh, take take this knight off so you don't have to worry about defending e4 so much. Okay, so I, this is a mistake, and we're out of the book at this point. And um, 
it's because of this mistake you see already um, black has equalized and maybe has an advantage although uh, he didn't take with the uh, bishop he took with the pawn so so this leads to about an equal game so i retreat and maybe still a slight edge and then he pushes on with f5 and i, I defend with f3 um, i didn't really like the idea of taking although the engine the engine thinks um oh thinks i should just play c4 and let him take. Hey, I was wondering about that. You know, do I really need to defend this pawn? So getting in the move c4 is an interesting idea there. So f3, he took, I took, and then he played um, bishop to e6. Pretty logical move, trying to slow down c4, but I play c4 anyway. And then uh, he pushed on past with b4, so maybe that's not the best move. Bishop g5 here. Uh, is interesting. Bishop g5, why can't I take that bishop? <laughs> hmm, what's hanging? Um, there, there is a threat of a rook skewer, maybe? Bishop g5? Oh, that's bishop g4. Sorry. Bishop to g5 here. Going after my bishop, which is loose. Yeah, so queen d2 to defend the bishop. Okay. So that's that's a way to play. That makes sense. He played b4, hitting my knight. And now I'll go knight c2, pretty much only move. And then he just castles here. And uh, so I've survived this phase, and I have maybe a slight edge. So I'm back to the normal uh, opening advantage for white. <laughs> Funny how that happens. just takes a few moves. So bishop e2, f5. And now um, the engine really thinks I should take. I didn't explore this earlier, but now... He takes f5. Let's take a look at this as a variation. Why not um, take back? I thought he would take with the bishop, first of all. And then it says just bishop to f3 is good. He's got, uh, yeah, a lot of open space on his uh, king side here. Material is still even. His knight is not coming into uh, d4 in this line, which was always an annoying threat in the game. So bishop takes, queen takes, and um, bishop h4 check, king e2. Just keeping the king in the center. Huh. The computer is not afraid. Very interesting. Okay, um, or he could have taken with the rook, was the other suggestion. If, uh, if e takes f5, rook takes, and then um, bishop to g4. Hitting the rook. Queen f8, just giving up the exchange. How about if he drops back to f6? Yeah, just take it off. And uh, man likes this position for um, for white. In fact, I could even castle in this position, which is a, a nice perk. Okay, so I didn't uh, calculate that correctly. I was thinking in this position that if I play e takes f5, it's just helping him develop his bishop. but. Uh, it is taking away defenders from the king side too, so that's something to keep in mind. Anyway, I played this move, bishop h6, and I was wondering, yeah, it is a choice here. He can play f takes e4 and just give up the exchange. Um, so this might have been an interesting try for black here. And come back with the queen or the bishop, say the queen takes. And um, so he's, he's slowed down my castling once again. He has an extra pawn in the center, so he's got kind of a lot of force there, and um, and he's just down, he's up a pawn, but he's down the exchange, so overall, uh, he's got good compensation, I guess. So that would have been a way to play. He probably thought about that, because he spent some time thinking after bishop h6, um, and instead he settled on uh, rook f6, which is actually a top, top engine choice, so that's a good move. Rook f6, so bishop g5 hitting the rook again. I don't want to just give this pawn up for nothing, so I need to keep making threats with that bishop. And now he went uh, rook g6. And here I could go ahead and play e takes f5 right away because it hits the rook. But I took here first, bishop takes e7. It's about the same, but maybe it's the other line is slightly more accurate. Um, because now he can throw in queen h4 check. That's the difference. Um, whereas in the other line that wasn't available. So now, uh, but he didn't do that. He took right away. And um, then I can just castle here. I probably should have. 
What did I play instead? I played knight e3, hitting the bishop, and I thought this was getting the knight to a good square, but bishop e4 is a good reply. And now uh, black is once again in the driving seat. So I went to bishop f3, and uh, he should throw a knight d4 here. I was going to take the bishop. The bishop seems to be hanging. Yeah, what's, what's up with this? Knight d4, bishop takes e4, queen h4 check. Ah, you know, these tactics... The bishop is loose there on e4. Okay, so I uh, missed that. Both of us missed that, probably, because this knight, uh, <clears throat> knight d4 is a strong move then. Okay, so he took my bishop, and now we're back to equality. So um, e4 is played. I had a threat on his knight. I move my bishop to uh, f5. Plays rook to f8, harassing my queen, and I get a uh, queen d5 check, hitting his knight and the king, and he plays queen to uh, f7. And unfortunately, I can't take the loose knight, because if I do, it's a queen f2 check. is pretty devastating. King d1 is the only move. And then he gets his material back immediately, but also his pieces are <laughs> arranged in a very threatening configuration. You know, rook, rook f2 is happening, and there's not much I can do about it, and my pieces are kind of out of play. I can give another check, but his king just goes to h8. And so I'm in big trouble here. So can't really play that. And fortunately, at least I saw that much and uh, traded queens. And rook takes. So uh, once again, we're in a situation where the game is about even. Rook f1. Knight to uh, e5. Rook takes. And he threw a knight d3 check. King here, and then king takes. So, so far, so good. I've survived all the way to uh, the end game here against a pretty strong opponent. So, um, he plays rook f1 check here. No, I play rook f1 check. It's saying I should play a3. Oh, they're, they're equal. Rook f1 check, king e6, and b3 to shore up the pawn over here. Okay, these are all playable moves. Keeps it in the range of rough equality. And then he goes rook f6, which is a small mistake, maybe. Because um, I can take here, which I do, and then I play knight d5 check. So it gets my knight to an active uh, post with tempo. And I'm hitting the pawn on b4, which is a critical point, because that keeps his knight tied down. So he plays king e5. I go king e3. I want to stop the king invasion. And then he goes knight to c5. So right here, right here is my one chance to win the game. And... Um, I just mentioned it previously, right? The purpose of the knight, or one of the perks of the knight here, is I can take on b4. And I should just do it. But instead, I got distracted. I saw his king coming in, and I was thinking about, you know, keeping the king from invading, and I played this move g3. So, but yeah, knight takes b4 is just winning here. Um, let's see. The engine is recommending a, a king move. Say um, the knight tries to go after my pawns, or there's a pawn move. Say he tries to create some weaknesses over here, then knight to c6 check just picks up that pawn. Yeah, so, so this is pretty good for white. I'm, I'm a pawn up, and uh, looks like he's going to have trouble slowing down these queenside pawns. They may make it through to, uh, <clears throat> to the finish line there. So um, knight c5 was a mistake. I was expecting the move uh, a4 here, and um, I was thinking I could get to this square, um, but actually I was mistaken in my, my calculation. But then the chess engine pointed out I actually can get to that square, because I can throw in this move, knight to e7. And now if he goes to uh, c1, I get to here with tempo check and get to pick up the pawn. So this is all good for me. Uh, even after uh, even after a4, um, a5, so knight e7 with the threat of the check and forking the king and the pawn. <coughs> so um, uh, that that would be the way to play it. So after, um, but in the game, I played king e3. He didn't play a4 or a5, which he could have tried knight e1 too. It says as well. Um, it's only a slight edge to white. Um, but he played knight c5, which is uh, a losing move if I only find it. So, you know, when you're playing a good opponent, sometimes there's only one chance, only one blender that you can uh, really take advantage of to get a winning position. Uh, and you got to jump on it. You can't be distracted by other things. But I played g3, 
and now uh, now it's an even game again. And uh, I, I just uh, was playing badly at this point. Yeah, I was sort of uh, nervous <laughs> after missing that, I guess. <laughs> and I was getting a little low on time, but uh, still there's no excuse. A3 is just a bad move. I forgot B3 was hanging. I thought, uh, well, he could take and I could get my knight to this square, which he does. And I do get my knight there, but then he takes on B3. So I'm just down a pawn for nothing. And he is pretty much winning. It's nice. Uh, his technique here was pretty good. So let's just play through this. I'm trying to get a passed pawn on the outside, but I am not. Um, he goes after the passed pawn, but then he uh, throws in this check so he can round it up with the knight and then gives me this pawn. And then he pushes his two pawns forward. I push mine. And it's not the number of pawns so much as it is their location. The knight here can stop either pawn from going forward, but it can't stop both of them. So he just pushes one, forces me to move my knight, and then he pushes the other. So that's an yeah, important technique to keep in mind. Uh, it's useful in all kinds of minor piece endings. You can do the same trick with a uh, bishop that's trying to hold up two pawns as well. Um, so he queens first, and, uh, and I don't. <laughs> so uh, this is winning for uh, for black and I resigned at this point but uh, anyway an interesting game I had some chances I just uh, missed them <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed that leave any comments you have in the section below and I'll see you again soon bye